Good evening, viewers, and welcome to this exclusive nine-part series where I will be interviewing representatives from every single one of our major local political parties. Now, with us in studio is Secretary General Manuel Ngaringombe from DTA Namibia, once known as the Democratic Turnhala Alliance. Good evening, sir. Uh, good evening, Alna. Good evening, Namibia. The DTA was formed in 1977. Now it's been 40 years since then and there are significant changes that's happened. We're not going to talk about the history so much as how much has the party changed since then? Um, thank you very much, Elna. Um, I have first to say that the, we are not the Democratic Tunhara Alliance. Um, since 1992, we have come up with a change of the name just to be the DTA of Namibia. And since then, we are just known as the DT of Namibia. Uh, some uh, background check. Um, where the DT started, as you well said, in 1977, um, we had an alliance whereby the DTA, those founders, went out to the entire, uh, that time, Southwest Africa, Namibia, and collected or talked to different uh, the tribal leaders of, of that time, the different ethnic groups of this country, and then they form coalitions that have ethnic representative. Now, since um, 1992, um, when we have uh, our independence, we say it, we, we don't need to say the Democratic Tunhara Alliance because um, we, we say it that people can still be members of the DTA. Their membership through, can through the alliance parties or just a direct membership as an individual Namibian. The DTA was formed for one uh, good reason in the 1977. And the reason was also to have a voice that speak about independence within uh, Namibia so that it will not be just from uh, one-sided ideology or one-sided uh, political party. Um, let's talk about that that historic name that you have, the fact that everybody still thinks it's a white party. Let's touch upon that for a second. Um, yes, um, let me say that the, the reason why the founders went out and consulted each and every Namibian from all ethnic groups in this country was to have the idea or the aim of one Namibia, one nation. And we thought that it's good to consult each and every person and have a party of inclusivity. Now, you, you know, uh, that time, uh, and I want to touch a bit about um, uh, the, the one of the founders, the one as uh, Derek March, he was the member of the National Party. And he was very resistant to some of the um, uh, apartheid laws that was in the National Party. He differed with some of the uh, colonial uh, ideologies within the National Party. And when he disagreed with them, it's when he made uh, people that have a vision for an independent Namibia like Chief Clements Kapu and so on, uh, people like uh, Jomba and others, and, and they came together and, and, and realized that we need to to, to have something different that will also speak against um, the apartheid that time and, 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 and try to unite the people of Namibia under one umbrella, and that's how the DTA was formed. So it's not a, a, a white party, yes. Let, let me say we had maybe many of the whites that time into the administration, into management, because sometimes when, when you form something new, uh, you might have a domination of one or another group. But that does not actually say that the DTA was a white party. The, the idea and so on uh, may be the whites in the administration that time, but we have a lot of, of, of black people. We have representatives from all um, ethnic groups. Um, it's the same even in the past and today with the ruling party. It was and it is still dominated one, by one uh, ethnic group, but we can't say Suabo is, is a Ovambo party. So I think that idea and 27 years of independence, we cannot work with that idea. Touching upon leadership, what, what, can, what significant changes are we going to see in the near future? Um, the DTA, the changes that came in 2013 was to bring uh, new blood, um, people that have a new vision for Namibia and also keep the old blood. That's why we have in the top six, for example, we, we have um, Honorable McHenry Venani, a very uh, aspirant, a very dynamic uh, young Namibian who is the president. We have uh, Honorable um, Kadionga Rechondo, the vice president. We have um, 
uh, Honorable Jennifer van den Heffer, um, who is um, the chairperson. We have myself as Secretary General, uh, Councillor Linus Topias as uh, Deputy Secretary General, um, Honorable uh, Nico Smith, who is the Treasurer General. Now, looking at that structure, that's the top six. And then we have a, a national executive committee that all the secretaries that in total consist of um, uh, 22 members. Now, if you look at our neck, and even at our top six, it has a, a mixture of representation. People that are having good um, economic and financial background that can talk about economic issues of this country. So within the leadership, the top six, we have that diversity. And also, uh, we have in the, the neck, different people of different diversity and different expertise, different racial groups. So it's not a wide dominated party. If you look even in our, in our our daily administration, our staff components that was dominated by whites, as you mentioned it in the past, we, we have more of uh, uh, black Namibians and so on. As you said, it was an alliance party. Now, there have been alliances that were promised and failed in, in the last 10 or 15 years. Um, will we be seeing alliances in future? Now, talking about um, uh, alliance, yes, I say the DD is not an alliance. But we, we have a, a very a proven uh, history that the DTA believe in coalition. Uh, remember, um, we had a coalition in 90, after the 1999 90, elections, the UDF DTA coalition, and, uh, uh, and we still believe that the only, or one of the ways, not the only ways, because we have another way internally, but one of the other ways, how are we gonna balance the power of, 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 the, of the power of the rule in this country? Yeah, is to have uh, the from fragmented uh, opposition parties, if they can unite for one purpose and one goal, to have an equal and fair representative of the Namibian people in our parliament, that will be the best. Or eventually, to take over government and become a leading government where you have new issues and new ideas. As you know, our current leadership are coming from very far backgrounds and sometimes have issues of the past and so on. But we need a Namibia where people see new aspirations and new vision for this country. And we think that the coalition of political parties can be an answer to that. So we but, still believe in yeah, coalition. But let's, just, let's look at the coalition because, I mean, um, it, it does seem a little bit obvious. You guys, you started with 21 seats in Parliament. Um, you, the previous election, you only had two. Now we're back to four again. And you do see these, you know, splintered groups within Parliament. And we would all like them to unify but for some reason the DTA hasn't managed to do that what what is the big problem there why are our opposition parties not coming together uh, Alna, I have two things I will take ourselves to be accountable but I will also talk about the ruling party for sure the you have to know that one of the propagandas um, is the propaganda of the victor which is our the Swapo party uh, they have a message of the DD, as you say, it is a white party, collaborated with colonialists, do A, B, C, D. But remember that the pass law in this country was uh, forced out by the DTA. Now, that have a negative impact on us. And, and, and I think within the years, we were more of, of opposing and opposing. And we're opposing ideas and, 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 and things that comes up. But we, we have realized that we should start to address issues that affect our people. Come up with alternatives. Alternatives. Mm -hmm. and, and if we have to oppose, we should have facts why we are opposing what we are opposing. And also create, yes, an alternative, as you said. And, and I think that was missing. But also when Namibians are very, are people that are very excited, uh, can be excited very easily, are emotional people. So when you have something new, they want to be part of something new. Now, remember the COD came in, 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 in 1999 and, and Namibians were excited. And they, 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 they joined um, uh, COD 
and and that was the theory took uh, votes from the oppositions and that was uh, um, the opposition the fuel opposition yeah and that was that and and that was yeah. that the uh, COD is no more uh, rdp with all due respect and um, i have all due respect for these parties came people were excited they joined rdp it happens, so we, we, we just take members from one another because we don't have an alternative. Now, the DTA, you remember, uh, the media houses and media practitioners and, and political analysts uh, in the 2014 um, elections were saying the DDA is at the crossroad, is at the graveyard, is going to be buried. Yeah. Mm. We have taken a, a leadership decision, come up with new leadership, come up with some messages of moving Namibia forward, uh, have some good outlined policies, and we became the official opposition. Although I'm not totally happy that we have five seats. Now we learned, and we learned that if we uh, structure ourselves well, if we put our policies well, if, if we address issues that, that, that affects the Namibian, the grassroots people there, and, and start to talk to other political parties and share the vision that we want to have for the new Namibia, we might have those that want to join the coalition of the willing and maybe, and I'm a firm believer in what I'm doing, I believe that the DTA with other opposition party in a, a, a well-coordinated effort of coalition can bring a solution to Namibia where one party does not dominate, but uh, where we have a balance in the politics of this country and where the, the, the desires uh, of the Namibian people to have equal share or a fair share in the uh, economy of this country and in other resources of this country will be realized. Mm. Definitely. And, let's, and if we talk about these parties and their different, maybe it could also be a mandate issue. The fact that different parties have different intentions and different mandates. Now, for those of us who the DTA has not reached yet, what is your mandate? I, I have to say this. Um, we have, the DTA have a firm belief, uh, principle beliefs. One, we, we believe in uh, peace, democracy, fairness uh, of the rule, and also um, uh, unity. So, um, but also we have uh, fundamental uh, social uh, economic issues that we are addressing and that we want a, a practical uh, end result. Uh, for example, the issue of, of, of land. We have the struggle for this uh, liberation of this country, it was for land. Now, if you look, the land uh, in Namibia, we have the big gap between the haves and the have nots. And b the big chunk of the land is in the hands of the haves. It's not wrong. And, and I want to make it clear today, at, 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 at tonight, that uh, I'm not against white Namibians occupying land in this country. Uh, I believe they, they do a good job um, when we come to agriculture, they contribute to the economy of this country. But what we are saying is that let's share the land. If I have four farms, five farms, let it be equitable. Let it be fiat equitable. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. then we have the issue of land resettlement. Yeah. Resettlement means you take me back where I was, where I, if I lost land, you take me back to where I have lost land. Now, if I bought a farm in Kunene region, or in Karas region, or in Omaheke region. The, those that have lost land and who are inhabitants of those regions should be the priority. Now, once you have met their priorities, you start to resettle others. Uh, that's one of the things that we still discuss and say, the land bill should not be passed till the land conference comes. We are believing in economy. Now, one of the things in Namibia, it's our education system. The education system of Namibia is creating uh, employees and not employers. It's creating job seekers and not job creators. And we have said, deficit, yes, yeah. that we have to, to, to come to, to the, the, the education system have to train skilled future Namibians. Now, the, the vocational training should be emphasized. For example, from grade eight, as you have the uh, other subjects uh, that will make you to become um, 
an academic in the specific field, you should also get the technical how know-how. Technical subjects should also come on board so that those that cannot do well in the final examinations of grade 12 and so on can have an alternative of improving their skills, their talents that they have. And, and if they can't go into the job market, they at least can, 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 can start to do something with their own hands and they can, they, they, they can have um, companies and start to employ others and so on. That's some things that we are talking about. Uh, we, we, we are talking about the entrepreneurship in this country. And the minister, we have a Ministry of Trade uh, um, and, and the entrepreneurship of, of interpre you know, entrepreneurship. Now, th that's another issue. When you look at tendering in this country, you will see big Namibian uh, companies, those of that are very close to the elites of this country, to those that are ruling this country, they have big companies, and they will join in tenders, have partnerships with tenders abroad like a lot of Chinese companies in this country, and, and they get the, 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 the whole share of, of the tender. Now what we are saying, for example, if you have a tender to build a, a, a 10 uh, storage uh, uh, or a 10 stairs building or whatever, uh, 10 floor building, you, you should look at the SMEs in this country. We have people that have skills to build, we have good um, people that can build in Kenya. You say, okay, for example, um, the first floor, uh, the building will give to, to uh, SME company A. The second floor, uh, this one. This will do the tiles, that will do what, this will do the, the we'll put in the windows and so on. So, so we're really, saying, really more share. local collaboration. Yes, local yeah. collaborations. Mm. Currently, our local people who mm. are in, uh, in, 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 uh, like construction uh, companies or construction uh, jobs, they are idling, they are laying around while we give these jobs to people that already have, people that have built uh, their, their lives who are financially well and, and we just give to them and then we give tenders to um, uh, companies of abroad who take most of these earnings and even invest it um, outside the country, and our own uh, GDP in the country is suffering because of that. This is what the DDA says. We defend human rights. We believe in human development. We believe that government have to serve the needs of the grassroots and have to bring a balance between the haves and have-nots. And currently in this country, the elites, those that have, some of us that are fortunate to have, are having, and those that not have are really pressed down. You're really running out of time, but I do quickly want to close with your challenges. Um, now, one of the things that, you know, we hear on the streets every day, oh, the opposition parties, you only hear about them a few weeks before the election. What are they doing? What are they busy with? Um, obviously, the biggest thing is getting your message out there. Now, I'm sure that's a challenge as well. What are your other challenges? How are you going to deal with them? Before I talk internally, let me quickly say something that is external, yes. but that is very important. That is a challenge to the party mm -hmm. and to democracy in this country. And that is the power distinction between the legislature and the executive. Um, 22 members of the legislature are members of the executive, meaning uh, cabinet ministers. Now, if you have followed well, the land bill now, you hear it in newspapers when the Namibians in their majority saying, please, um, let this bill be postponed. Let's have a, a land conference. The minister says, I will table the bill at the opening of parliament. Why? Because he is a referee and he's a player. So there's no separation of There is of no powers. separation of power yeah. between legislation and executive. Mm. And, but and, and, but and to the ordinary viewer, just, just explain to me how, <laughs> how relevant is that? I'm not sure, we're not all politicians here. Explain to me how that works. Let me say this. The legislature, they are the decision-making body. They look at policies, they look at bills, they take decisions that will affect the lives of a Namibian on the street. They, they come up with these bills. They, they, they have to debate these bills and, and they have to make researches and come up with a tangible document that will address and talk to the needs of the Namibians. Now, 
the executive are the implementers. That execute they that execute piece of material. They execute that piece of material. They have to make sure that it's fully executed and it benefits those that are supposed to benefit. Now, there is um, a desire for you to, 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 to bring up issues and say, in my ministry, I have tabled this bill, I'm working on this bill, and so forth. And, and, and sometimes, because you are that, now, and you are members of the legislature, you want to implement, you want to execute, but you have to take decisions. And you are tempted, because the decisions have to be thoroughly researched, thoroughly debated, and a concrete, workable, positive decision has to be taken. Now, because you want to implement, you are forcing. Mm. And because it's your like goals, marking your own test exactly, at school. And yes. says, let, let's, let's pass it. So if the executive members are not part of the legislature, that will give the legislatures a fair and, and an open a platform to thoroughly look at bills and come up with the table of documents. We will have new branches in this country who are working to have um, in the 121 constituencies at least six branches in, in each constituency. And those branches will be a total of 127 uh, branches um, uh, in, in the whole country. We are looking at the issue of rebranding and, and unfortunately time is going, but that's a very important aspect. Yeah. What do we mean by rebranding? We don't mean by changing the colors of the DTA. We don't mean changing the signs of DTA. That's not enough. That's not rebranding. Rebranding is saying, how do we position ourselves as a party that will, uh, will, that will address issues affecting the Namibians? And that will be seen as an alternative exactly. to the Exactly. Environmental, yeah. social, economic, mm -hmm. whatever issues that affect the Namibians. How do we position ourselves? What will, how will our policies and our manifestos address these issues? And, and, and how will we help the Namibians not to have a two-third majority ruling party, but to have a ruling party that will not only sing the praises of the past of liberation, but that will look at Namibians to have bread on the table, to have a, a roof on their head, um, to, be, to be part and parcel of the economical development of this country. That's a DTA that we want to have. And we believe that with the rebranding, we will be an alternative. And a plus, if we could come into coalition with all other opposition parties in this country. So you are, you are telling everyone out there, DTA will be in your constituency soon. There's no excuse to not educate yourself on your, your on our number one opposition. Get ready. <laughs> we are effect, uh, effective and active in parliament. We are active, we'll be active and active with foot soldiers in your constituencies. We'll be there. Get ready. Open your eyes, open your ears, and we will not just come there to make a show. We'll come there to represent you, to hear you, and to take your matters and, and discuss them and come up with a tangible uh, decision that have been taken and create a Namibia of real inclusivity, a Namibian house, as we are being told, that will really be inclusive and that will answer to the aspirations of the Namibian people. We are ready to do that. Brilliant. Mr. Ngaringombe, thank you very, very much for your time. Thank you very much, Alna. Thank you, Namibia. <laughs> we are here to serve and will serve the Namibian people. Brilliant. One Good Namibia, night. one nation. Guys, that's all from us tonight. I'd love to hear your comments on the show. SMS us at triple five. SMS is charged at one Namibian dollar. Um, this interview will also be uploaded to our social media pages, so be sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more. Thank you and good night.